Hi guys, got a little late start here, but I'm potting up some elderberries. These are ones that I had put in uh, a raised bed last year. I was trimming and cutting back um, one of my elderberries that I have growing in one of those white barrel planters that I have scattered around here. And I thought, eh, let's go ahead and see if we can root some cuttings. Well, five of the cuttings did in fact root. I think I planted seven total. So five out of seven, pretty good for a first time trying it. So I pulled three of the five out because they were kind of getting out overshadowed. I should have pulled these eyes out uh, last year and relocated them once they rooted, but you know me, I like to procrastinate. So I thought, yeah, let's, and as you can see, they're starting to bud out. Focus camera, focus. Here we go. So here are two of the originals. These are ones that I got that I rooted Oh, Lord, when did I get these? 2019, 2020. And I put two of them in this pot. They were cuttings as well. And they're not doing too bad. I trimmed these guys back already so they would be ready. And basically what I'm using these guys for is kind of my nursery stock. If I can get some elderberries from these guys, but they're in these planters. I water them as needed. You can see they're, they're mulch for the winter and they're very hardy. They do keep con continue to coming back no matter how bad of a winter we have. Um, here's the other one over here. If you notice the camera bobbing and weaving, my knee is giving me fits and starts. So again, Come on, focus, there you go. So, another one. This one does a little bit better than the other one. I don't know if that's just happenstance, but this one seems to be a little bit healthier. So, when I was cutting these two that are in the buckets, I took the trimmings of some of it. I didn't take all of it because I got a buttload. And this is my pallet raised bed that I made out of wooden pallets that it was very intensive work but for you know 20 30 dollars worth of materials not too bad i do need to raise up the soil level on this end i did okay on that end with the asparagus but uh beggars can't be choosers so i'm waffling with myself of what i want to do with these guys there's one plant here, one plant there, elderberry. And then on this side, I have two grape vines that I grew from cuttings. These are, two over here are called Reliance. They're a red grape. And then this guy over here behind this one, this is a Concord grape. And I went ahead and trimmed these guys back just because I could get things cleaned out figure out what I was going to do where and the big thing is going to be you know if they did actually come back um, I need to amend this bed and I need to mulch these guys up but so so the three actual plants that I put in the pots and then I've got these two right here they're budding out. Elderberry likes to bud out pretty early. We're supposed to be getting another cold snap tomorrow. It's like 70 degrees right now. It's going to get down to like mid-20s tomorrow night. So taking advantage. Um, so I'm trying to decide if I want to move both of these guys. I moved the three smaller ones because they were a little bit easier to move. But definitely going to cut back probably cut back these stems that are heading back into the raised bed 
just to give the grapes a little bit more sun exposure. I may just leave these two. Where's my camera? There it is. I may just leave these two right here and cut off the ones behind it, the three behind it, and root cuttings from that. Um, probably going to decrease the number of branches on this side too. And again, you know, I'll either cut them back so that they're a little bit more user friendly in this spot or hey, that helped. A little user friendly in this spot or I may just go ahead and move both of them now. Well, not today. Probably another day. I don't really have a spot yet. I have kind of an idea of something I want to do landscapey wise. And let's hobble over here and see. Ooh, ooh, seedlings, seedlings. And most of these aren't actual weeds. Got some poppies in here and some yarrow and some daffodils starting to come up and catnip. So yay, spring, I love spring. I also have to get the other remaining cappers for this bed and put it over there so I don't have a mess of weeds coming up. All right, so idea, hobble, hobble, hobble. So, hello bees. Enjoy the weather. All right, so this will end here. And I will have to figure out which way I'm going to do this. Unfortunately, when they did this, this is a like a little mesa kind of effect. Basically, it's where somebody at some point scraped off this area to be a house site. And didn't really square it up, which, okay. But it would have been nice if it had been more square. So there's a point right around there. And then it comes in at an angle to go to that point over there. So there's a difference of probably 10, 15 feet. So I've got a romb rhomboid here instead of a square. But what I'm planning to do is, 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 I'm going to take some landscape timbers like I did with my back planting area. And I'm just going to start laying timbers across here. Again, not going to be square, but I'm not going to, not going to be weirded out. Put down cardboard to suppress weeds. Probably come over here and attempt to chunk up these little these are little cedar seedlings that get mowed back so they're like dwarf seedlings but I don't like I don't like cedar that much and there's an awful lot around here so I don't feel guilty murdering cedar trees this is my little box elder seedling that I liberated from over at my parents house it's growing but it's not growing as fast as I would like it to so We'll see. That may come out. But then I think I will just start taking landscape timbers and run them kind of like train tracks along here. Like two, two and a half feet apart like the beds in the back are. And then, you know, put down cardboard to suppress the weeds. And uh, get start bringing in soil. Putting it down. And then I'm hopefully to do kind of a, a modified... Uh, hedge and I thought I could do uh, the elderberries, the mulberries, forsythia. Hey, let's turn it around so you can see me. Forsythia, elderberries, mulberries, something else. Oh, elderberries. I just had it. Elderberries, mulberries, Forsythia. It's been one of those days. It'll come to me. Forsythia. Maybe blackberries. I just uh, pulled up some blackberry brambles that were in the wrong spot. And I took cuttings from, I think there was like seven or eight little segments that I... Stuck into some pots to see how they would do. 
And uh, so I may use those kind of filler to be a combination of, you know, wildlife habitat. Um, for when they flower, of course, be for the bees. We'll see. It's not going to happen anytime soon. But what else does? Um, but I'm in the process of going through and checking to make sure beds are ready. This stuff, this is, I cut back this Vitex here. So it's a little bit cleaner. Got rid of old and damaged and crossed and broken branches and basically made it so that I could pass by between my little horse trough planter and this little planter with all my little daffodils coming up and about to bloom. Oh, daffodils. I may still cut this branch out, but uh, just have to wait and see because it's kind of in the way, but not bad. But then again, it probably will eventually. So I may come back and cut that one out. I was trying to be judicious this time around and not take out too much, but as you can see, I did anyway. The one that's over there on that end, I probably won't get to once again. The one over here I can do fairly regularly just because it's smaller, but that one over there, I look at it and it's like, yeah, not today, Satan. And, uh, I put it off, so I've been putting it off, doing anything with it for several years now. One of these days, it's not going to be happy with me and it's going to croak, but we'll see. And the Johnny Jump Ups keep flowering. This is the asparagus bed. You can see there's one old dried up thing of asparagus I did come through here and top it up with some soil but you can see we've got Johnny jump up seedlings coming up this is dame's rocket that will be flowering soon some strawberries that I moved from the horse trough planter to over here they may or may not take hold and take off wouldn't be a big deal some time is doing pretty good more dame's rocket daylilies and then hopefully here in the next month or so the asparagus will start sprouting out and come to life just like walking by all these things and going is that a weed no it's actually something i planted yay all right here's my blueberry my little blu-ray that is still alive it's alive I was out and about yesterday going to different greenhouses and plant nurseries and things like that. I almost bought another blueberry, but I chickened out. I'm going to do a little bit more research on what variety I want to get next to cross-pollinate with this one. And then I have to figure out where I can actually put it because as many beds as I have, I kind of start running out of room. And probably what I will do in the corners um, until hopefully the blueberry gets large enough and bushy enough that it does obliterate more of the soil um, I'll put like annual flowers and that kind of thing maybe some onions along the edges we shall see stay tuned okay so I mentioned going to plant nurseries yesterday I did buy a couple of things I have been wanting a Wolf River apple for the longest time and I went ahead and bought one I've got a I do have a planting site in mind for it but we will it's about a little over five feet tall with the pot so maybe four feet tall without it well, it's a nice little size and it fit in the back of Lola not too bad and then I went out and I bought same place a peach tree. This is an Alberta peach. This is going to be one of the varieties that blooms later than some, supposedly. I had it on my list and I'm going to guess that's one of the reasons why. 
is supposed to be a more northern plantable variety. You'd think being as close to Georgia as I am, peaches would do better here. But one thing about East Tennessee is that a lot of, we get a lot of late spring frosts that kind of put the kibosh on a lot of blooming. So uh, we'll see. And uh, I don't plan on getting any fruit from either one of these guys, but I like having it in my repertoire. Reason why I like the Wolf River apples, they're really big. And I have small enough apples normally on my trees that I figure I have a half decent shot of having a normal size apple <laughs> for once. Oh, lordy. All right. So I'll be digging a couple of holes in my future. Um, probably have a couple other plant trees and things that I'll need to get in the ground. But I'm not going to worry about that. All right. Let's go look at what I'm doing with the elderberries. All right, so there's the two of the three that I pulled up. Got in their little planter. You can see this one is setting up little shoots from the base. And that one's setting up some shoots from the base. And then I've got this one that was a little bit bigger that I started potting up. And then I was like, oh, hey, I have my cell phone in my pocket. I better uh, get it out. It's also got some little shoots coming up too. So what I'm going to do is I probably need to put some more soil in the bottom so it sits up a little bit higher. I will do that. And then I'll just start filling it up with soil. Here's my soil. Doesn't look as great on camera, at least not through my lens here. But this is just a bag of supposed to be potting mix but it's mostly just looks like peat moss and wood chips i added the perlite and there's also some uh, vermiculite in there and i threw in some uh, composted chicken manure to make this nice it's nice and moist but it's not saturated or anything like that we're supposed to get rain tomorrow so i'm going to leave these guys outside after i get them potted out I'm not going to really baby them or anything like that. Um, I'm debating because it's supposed to be, the weather says so far that it's supposed to get down to 27 tomorrow night and Thursday morning. I may or may not pull them into the garage. I may leave them out there because I mean they've already been outside. So we'll see. I'll show you what happens after this. All right, there she is. So I add a little bit more soil to the bottom and then just start at adding soil around the root ball, to, taking time to shake it periodically and kind of pressing down. I don't want to press down too hard. And I figure when the rain comes through tomorrow, it'll settle a lot of the soil. I can top it up again if I need to. And I've got some where I did some Cutting down and removing of limbs. I've got a few more cuttings here. I'm probably going to put them into all of them or some of them into a pot all together to let them root for next year. Okay, put them in their little temporary spot. So I've got the bigger elderberry cutting, the, or not cutting, but actual plant with roots, and then these two smaller ones. And then I was able to do five cuttings to root. Just put them all in the same kind of soil in the dirt so there was at least two nodes showing through and I'm just going to leave them here temporarily so they have a little bit of shelter against the wind and things like that and then I'll decide where I want to put my nursery. Here are my little cuttings for my blackberries. So I've got, oh there's seven of them not six. Seven of the smaller ones, and that was the main plant that I just pulled up. They all came from right here in this bed. So I got in here, got those blackberries out, pulled a lot of weeds and the dead leaves from those irises. And then I'm going to, hopefully tomorrow before it gets cold, 
before it rains. Um, come in here and put in a little bit of compost on top, fill in around corners. These are my little crocuses. They're coming up. They've actually been coming up for quite some time now, but they're hanging on. And I'm just going to put a little layer of soil over there to over them to give them a little bit better. We'll see what, how they do, you know, flowering wise and stuff like that. And once they've finished flowering, I'll probably dig them up and move them a little somewhere. It's a little bit more advantageous for crocuses. I really don't know why the soil level in this bed has gone down so far. But same thing with these irises. You can't really bury irises too far. I mean, you don't really want to have that much showing. But uh, you still need some, still need some soil in here. So I'm going to do the same thing with the crocuses, the irises that I do with the crocuses. Once they're done flowering and the flowers are spent, um, I'm just going to dig them up and either replant after I've filled up the bed here with more soil or uh, put them in a completely different spot to be determined later but at least it's cleaned out for right now and somehow I have to figure out what I'm going to use to fill up at least four inches of soil I don't want it going all the way to the tippy top but it definitely needs more soil all right that was my day how was yours Talk to you later. Bye.